with bias balls. And those who have balls have their fair share of lawsuits, bankruptcy, police harassment, and, 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 and others. I did not name the people. And an opposition which chooses to play within the rules set by the PAP will naturally become inactive. And it will not be seen by the electorate as providing the leadership against the DAP. And that would also mean that breakthroughs in elections in the light of the present electoral rules will never be possible. Now, what role then can the civil society and blogging community fill in such a scenario? Now, as citizens, you have a right to be involved in politics. You are also the cause and the reason and the end in politics. And if you realize that political parties are not making headway for whatever reason, it is always open for you citizens to take the step forward into civil society and to do what you think needs to be done. Now this can be done without the need to cater to the concerns of being politically correct or to be afraid to go against the grain of mainstream opinion. This is because when you're fighting in civil society, you're not looking at votes. Now, civil society and the blogging community, being in partisan politics should therefore not view themselves as separate from politics. Instead, they should free themselves from the shackles of partisan politics and the need to be politically correct to win votes, but instead focus on what they believe are concerns and causes which they believe in. Now, when each individual decides to do something about a situation on his own, he will, in this day and age, get easily plugged into a community in which will put him in touch with the like-minded. As the like-minded are put together, they can collectively pull their energies and resources towards the causes they believe in. As no man is an island, pushing on social, economic, or even political issues will put the civil society on the same path as an active and responsible opposition. Now, as civil activism, as the understanding in the activism grows, then there will be an inclination to do more. And the inclination to do more will put formerly unawakened citizens on the path towards politics to jobs for national leadership. Now this, in my view, will be the path to set the stage for the rejuvenation of opposition parties, which at this point of time will be of utmost importance as I see that it is only a matter of time before the PAP administration fails miserably and fails miserably to cover up for its errors. Now, I come to the part where whether or not the one-party state is good for Singapore. Of course, I don't agree that the one-party state is good for Singapore because the one-party state has only produced weak leaders who are disconnected not only from the people, but also from the way the markets that Singapore is connected with. Now, last night on TV, Minister Mentor Lee Kuan Yew claims that there was 100 billion Singapore dollars in reserves. His own words. And he says that this was before the crisis occurred. And he says that these assets were liquidated before the crisis and the investment in those banks. Now we all know that the bank is not investment still. And the price of the stocks plummeted after they were invested. Our hard earned money into those illiquid banks. And now he says that this investment is for the long term. And they're looking at 20 years, 30 years. We have a minister in the Prime Minister's office who spoke of rubbish. And this I'll say is Lim Sui Se. Now he spoke of rubbish towards one of our opposition MMTs in Parliament. And he asked Lao Tia Tian whether or not he would rather have a 9% CPF cut or to have the job credit scheme implemented. Now I cannot imagine having to pay so much for a minister 
who cannot even conduct a proper argument. Because how can someone of ministerial calibre be able to equate a 9% CPF cut as the only alternative to the implementation of the jobs credit scheme? We also have Sen Han Tong, MP for Yo Chukang, burnt in an attack. We have threats levied against PAP MPs. And the PUP has chosen not to look into the mirror in trying to solve the problem. Instead, they are branding the attackers as IMH cases. Now, don't misunderstand me. I do not condone violence, but what should be done for these attackers is for them to be placed before a court, for the law to apply accordingly. These attackers, the attackers should be made to stand trial instead of putting them away in mental institutions. Now, when Seng Han got burnt, I was one of the very few who asked the PAP to reflect on itself. It looks like it has fallen on deaf ears. Rear Admiral Lui Tuck Yu had the cheek to say that the blogger community had lost its chance to regulate itself. I suppose he meant to say that he, or rather now his party, intends to regulate internet speech. Now, why would a government, a mighty government, a mighty party, a minister want to regulate internet free speech? Is it because that they are finding the heat becoming unbearable? My advice then would be, if you can't take the heat, please leave the kitchen. Now, why do I say so? Because this man is not to be an area admiral. And that's the equivalent of a brigadier general. Leadership in the armed forces is supposed to be forged and tested by the heat of combat and courage under fire. I would have expected our BGs and equivalents to be able to take the bullets and the shells lying at them during wartime. And what's more, if what's happening now is just mere comments and criticisms towards them and their party. Now, at this very moment, if the PAP is still open to advice, I would say that the cabinet has grown soft and weak. And the only hope for our country would be for new leadership, a stronger leadership, to take its place. Thank you.